I'm Dr. Barry Oldman, and this is How Not to Shout! Rock-a-bye, baby, in the treetops! I love this book! Hey, I've got a secret to tell you. I'm really hungry! <laughs> hey, don't tell anyone. So once we are saved, do we need to get baptized? Yes, baptizing, it's kind of just like a public announcement that you've been saved and it's like the next step. Baptism is basically like a statement to everybody and your friends and family around you that um, I've accepted God into my heart. It's when like they dunk you into water of Jesus and you get dunked from your old life into a new one. If you sin and you wash away your sins. Baptism is like showing everybody that you got saved. Baptism is being put under water to show a symbol that you've accepted Christ and that you want to show it. Your pastor at your church puts you in this tub, sort of, and then he um, baptizes you and what that is symbolizing is that um, all your sins are being washed away and it's like the Holy Spirit goes into your body and now you are a child of God. So why do you think that we should be baptized? So you can show that you've accepted Christ. It will show that you love Jesus and it will show that you are the church. I think it's important because like if you've been sinning and you want to like get rid of all of it, you can like get baptized. I think that we should be baptized just um, to know that you have Jesus in your heart and so you can have the Holy Spirit live inside of you and you can always turn to Him whenever you need help. Again, like you should, it's just like a public announcement that God is, and Jesus is your Savior and that you are ready to be held in His arms and that you, He's important to you. It's a great statement and when I was baptized, I definitely felt like this a sensation that I felt cleaner and happier. So yeah. I felt like it was like the best thing ever. It was just awesome. Like, I just think it was amazing. In Minecraft story mode, learning all about how to build our stories. Today we're gonna talk about how to shout our story. Before we get started, I think that we need to practice shouting. Now on the count of three, I want everyone at all of our campuses to shout story mode as loud as you can. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> that's, that's some pretty good shouting there, but I know that we can be louder than that. Don't you think we can? We definitely can be louder. In fact, I want us to be so loud that they can hear us in the adult worship experience. So we're gonna shout story mode one more time as loud as we can. Ready? One, two, three. That is some really loud shouting. That's such a great job, everybody. You have proven that you can shout really loud with your voices. But did you know that there is a very special way to shout that you have put your faith in Jesus? It's called baptism. Now, baptism isn't just about getting wet. Baptism is a way for you to show others what Jesus has done for you. To show you what I mean, let's play a super quick game of charades. I want to act something out and I want you to shout out when you know what it is, okay? So I'll act it out and you tell me what you think it is by shouting out, okay, ready? Here's the first one. All right, some of you shouted that out, that's great. I was playing football, that's awesome. Now this next one's a little tricky. As soon as you figure it out, I want you to shout it out as loud as you can, okay? Let's see if you can get this one. This one's a little trickier. All right, I hear some of you out there. What is it, what is it? That's right, some of you guessed that I was playing 
video games. That's a great job. So in that game, I wasn't actually playing football or video games, but that was a way for me to show you guys something. You see, in the same way, baptism isn't actually washing away our sins, but it's a way to show others that Jesus has taken your sins away. Now, if you weren't here last week, I wanna encourage you to ask one of your neighbors or talk to your small group leaders about that. It was a big deal. You see, if you've asked Jesus to be your savior, then he has taken away your sins. And so baptism is the next step for us. It's a way to shout our story to everyone around us. In Matthew chapter three in the Bible, it tells us about when Jesus was baptized. And it gives us an example of how we should be baptized. It says that Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. And when Jesus was baptized, John the Baptist lowered him completely under the water and then lifted him back up again. And that's just how we'll do it here at Elevation. We'll dunk you under the water, lift you back up, and then all of us are gonna go crazy celebrating what Jesus has done in your life. Well, maybe some of you have already been baptized and I'm so proud of you for doing that. That's a great part of your story. And for others of you, maybe you're thinking about being baptized soon, and that's awesome too. Well, some of you, maybe you just have questions about baptism. Well, the good news is, is that today, we're gonna be learning all about baptism. But the question I have for you right now is this. How will baptism be a part of the story that you are building? Hi, Pinewood Rangers. Happy Sunday. I'm going to read through the Bible story for this week. This week we are in Acts chapter 8, verse 26 through 41. So Acts is kind of near the back of your Bible after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Next comes Acts. So I've already flipped here, but I'll give a pause for you guys to find your place in your Bible. Ready? Pause. Are you with me? Did you find it? Okay, if not, you can always listen to me. Here we go. This is about Philip and the Ethiopian. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. Well, how can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip up and to sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage out of Isaiah. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In humiliation, he was deprived of justice who can speak of his descendants, for his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, well, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, well, here's some water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up and out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared um, 
and continue to travel about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached the next country. Wow. How I love this part where it says, um, when they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. So baptism is just such a cause for joy in our lives. So there you have it. Getting baptized just brings us so much joy because we are obeying God and telling our story to the world.